Hello, Christy and class. My name is Eliandra Costain, and my group members are Meta Nia Chase Tater, Noriko Horiguchi, and Ryosuke Takashima. Our presentation is about identity in high school. The term identity generally refers to a person's sense of themselves with regards to how the community around them lives. Identity is the defining character or personality of an individual as recognised by society. This is influenced by society, family, friends and anyone that that person comes across. A person forms their identity through their experiences, thoughts and influences and in high school all these things change. A new environment, new people and new teachers affect a person's identity as they may feel compelled to change themselves to fit in better with their new friends. High school is a chance to become a new person, and if someone wasn't happy with who they were in primary school, it is very likely that they will change themselves to fit in better with whoever they are hanging out with. For example, a person with no friends at primary school might change their identity and become more social so they can make more friends, or a person might become a stoner to fit in with their stoner friends in high school. There has been an increasing interest in identity since the 70s as a result of what has come to be called identity politics, a politics with which cultural studies has been aligned as we know. Identity politics are politics where groups of people with a single identifier, i.e. Catholic, gay or Maori, tend to promote their own interests with little to no concern over the interests or concerns of large political groups. In high school, where identity is very fluid, Identity politics can be both simple and more complicated. Identity politics within a high school environment is a fluid and often messy topic. With females at high school, they tend to change into whoever they think would be most accepted and will often shun people they have known for years in order to be more popular, whereas males tend to try to find people like them and tend to stick with them throughout high school. It's extremely hard to explain such politics, as they change per year level, per class, and per group slash clique. Common themes, however, are identities such as popular, foreign, special education, sporty, or smart. These are broad topics, and they form the basis for most identities in high school, which then each individual builds upon to become individual. This is the complicated part of high school identity politics, and the simple part is much, much easier. Simply put, identity in high school is always changing. Girls tend to try to fit in and guys try to find others like them. This is the simplest way of explaining a very difficult topic. Of course, the question is, what happens when someone decides to do something different? What if someone reacts negatively to being told they have to change, or watching all their friends change without them? This is where it gets complicated again. A little psychological trick might kick in, called the backfire effect. The backfire effect is something that kicks in when we feel our identity is being threatened. The backfire effect is the tendency of some people to resist accepting evidence that conflicts with their beliefs. The effect is demonstrated when people presented with that conflicting information become even more convinced of their original beliefs rather than questioning them. An example of the backfire effect would be, say, if a person didn't know they were adopted, and they built their entire identity around this and a few other facts. If they were to find out later on that they were adopted, it could shake the entire foundations of their identity, and their first instinct would be to react negatively because they, or rather their identity, felt threatened. They could accuse their parents slash siblings of lying, give evidence as to why they aren't adopted, plead to make it not to, and try to defend themselves and one of the foundations of their identity. The backfire effect and identity politics obviously occur outside of high school as well, but it is during high school that most people create or find their own identities, as it is often a stressful time and everyone wants to belong somewhere. Another thing to remember is that all these things I've said, and all the things that will be said in this presentation, that they can change depending on where you went to school. For example, Australian high school experiences and identities are probably vastly different to American or Japanese ones. And obviously it changes from school to school. So one Australian high school could be very different to another Australian high school. And then if you take into account international schools and online schools and different laws or customs, 
High school is a completely different experience for everyone, and almost anything said on the subject is either a personal opinion or a gross oversimplification. High school experiences are different. They are messy, complicated, awful, amazing, the best, the worst, and completely individual. High school is viewed as the most important, the most exciting, and the most trying time of your life. Not only because of all the schoolwork you have to do, but because of the experiences you have with the people around you, and how it helps your journey in figuring out who you are, so that once you graduate, you'll be okay on your own. But this is not always the case, as your experiences would always depend on the people and institutions around you. During your teenage years, your life is heavily monitored and regulated in order to prepare you for your coming adult life. You'll have a lot of good times, but also go through a lot of struggle, whether that be because of school or because of personal issues. This is specifically done through your experience in high school, whether it be messy or the best time of your life, your entire life is based around your high school life, whether you're active in it or not. You spend six hours of your day in school, maybe you're in a club or sport that you have to go to before or after. Then you have your school friends that you talk to as much as you can and sit with and be with as much as you can. In this case, high school plays a huge part in shaping your identity as it surrounds you and every part of your life. It's a period where you are trying to figure out who you are and what your purpose is. Who am I? Who do I want to be? What am I doing to make me that person? Are a few questions that you may think of through these years. This is the place where you'll grow academically, but it's also the place where relationships and friendships are formed and broken. It's in these times teenagers learn to deal with people, heartbreak, betrayal, love, kindness. High school is known as a battleground for many because for some, it's a day-to-day -day battle. Through their academics, they are taught to develop their own ideas, form their own opinions and make an argument for them. But sometimes the things you learn in classes aren't as beneficial as they make it seem. Sometimes your teachers aren't that great and it's hard to really care about what you're being taught. In the journal article on high school identities, the author note that the cultivation of the whole student in school and creating an atmosphere that does not relegate the experience of students could enhance their confidence in meeting future identity development challenges and may foster their participation in exploration. This implies that students' experiences in high school is directly linked to their ability in identity growth and participation. They go on to explain the value of students' relationships and experiences with their teachers and classmates as personally meaningful academic experiences are what allow students to confidently explore and grow during their high school career. Therefore, a positive experience in high school should ensure positive and developed identity growth in students. However, high school can also prevent genuine identity growth by attempting to shape students into the, to the societal norm, limiting their individuality and expression. The most obvious case of this is uniforms and dress codes. In Australia, we have uniforms which limit a student's individuality from their hair to the shoes they wear. Although this argues for a collective unit which encourages students to focus on their studies, it also discourages them from understanding their value as they are leveled up to the same as their classmate who is most likely not at the same level as them. Academically, high school attempts to shape students way of thinking through providing them with specific ways to solve problems and pass their classes. This limits their freedom of expression as it places the belief in the right and wrong answer with the student's answer most likely being the wrong. This is seen through the limited classes available to students, which limits their ability to explore their interests and passions and the way their curriculum is shaped around a collective unit, such as NAP plan and the QCS test, and what we previously experienced as the OP. Students are unable to fully express themselves as they must stick to what the curriculum tells them to, which may not always suit the student's individual ability. We already know that not all students are built to be scholars and yet high school is built in a way that says they are. This is specifically seen in Japan, whose high school regulations are much higher than those of Australia. I'm Nodoka. I would like to talk about high school in Japan.
Do you think education is a religion? According to a book written by Hood, he interviewed Okamoto, who is a director of an educational copyright company in Japan. Okamoto said education is a religion because society, religion, and education are important in controlling the quality of society. However, many Japanese do not have religion, so education in schools plays a most significant role in forming the society. <coughs> Therefore, the influence of a school on a students' sense of value and identity might be quite strong, in my opinion. In other words, students can shape their identity when interacting with others. However, some school regulation may restrict these influences. Generally, the regulation of high schools in Japan for example, uniforms and grade systems are similar to Australia. Also, the rules are different depending on the school. Most schools have regulations about appearance, such as no jewelry or makeup, and their hair color and style. These are some of the regulations of my high school. It might be interesting for you to know that the student should dye their hair color black even though their original hair color is brown. And they should not shave their eyebrows. Additionally, dating with the opposite sex is prohibited. So, what is the purpose of school regulations in Japan? According to Miyashita, the regulations mean the rule, which is the responsibility of each principal in order to keep all the students safe and healthy and develop their learning abilities. However, some schools have regulations that are too strict, which holds students to be the same as other students and prevents them from making individual choices. Namely, it may restrict the students' own identities. Next, I would like to talk about school caste. School caste is a hierarchy formed among students in these classrooms. Students who hold a position of superior hierarchy tend to bully the lower ranking students. Students are ranked by combining characteristics such as having high exercise capacity, an attractive appearance, and distinct personality, being together and able to be playful, according to Miesta. Some high schools have this problem in Japan. Therefore, even if they are in the highest rank in the class, students try to follow the most popular students as students or students as sometimes they are too, in order to prevent relegation to lower hierarchical position. When students follow the student in the highest position, for example, a sorry. When a student follow the highest position student, this means that the students always agree with the top student. For example, in um, all female cliques, the followers will imitate the leader's looks to show solidarity. Lastly, 
I want high school students to be themselves rather than for others. High schools and high schools should assist students in realizing the value of identity and set some opportunity to develop their identities. So far, we have discussed the psychology of the people at school, the role of the school, and the influence of regulations at high schools in Japan. In my part, I would like to deepen the discussion focusing on active learning in Japanese society that has recently increased demand, especially in Japan's higher education. First of all, what is school? John Dewey stated in his own book called The School and Society, School is a small society. School education is a thing to be done especially for the comprehensive development of human beings. As the pa past presenter stated, so that maximum consideration is given for students learning. Not to mention it, however, school education is more than just that. There is an intention to nurture human resources to meet each country's needs. The strict school rules in Japan would also be the result of maximizing res respect for students' learning. In addition, since most of the people who receive such education in Japan as a whole account for it, it can be said that society asks for such personnel. In such a sense, it can be said that school is in similarity relationships interacting with society each other. In high education in Japan, although there are exceptions, the school regulations restrict students strictly, and under the influence of that, there are also many classes which require students to be receptive. So the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sport, Science and Technology called MEX in Japan stated in a new course of study guidance. Each child has a variety of possibilities and has diverse educational needs. In order to create new value in a mature society, it is stronger than ever that each person respects in different group backgrounds and each one has a variety of experiences and it is strongly required to develop skills of various fields of expertise. On the other hand, it is also important to balance skills for living in society. In addition, the MEX study to promote active learning which is learned mainly by students. In a few teaching class in Japan so far, the classes with one unit as a class were mainstream. However, as a result of the popularization of active learning, education has started to be more fluent and more sophisticated. As a result, students acknowledging a new social norm become adults, and then characteristics of the community so far will also change little by little. However, the school regulations are still in a situation that impedes a st student's identity. As a government, while education making use of individuality is launched, various problems still remain the form of pulling out the policy of the educational practice. It will be greatest challenge to be asked in the in the future to set out the implement and concrete and sophisticated measures. Let's organize the discussion so far. A place called school is generally refers to the person's sense of themselves with regard to how the community around their, their lives, defining character of personality of the individual, influenced by society, family, friends, and anyone that a person come across, their experiences, thoughts, and influences, and all these things have a possibility to change. A school is a place for students to learn academics, relationships, friendships, and school is a place to prepare them for life, dealing with conflict, achieving goals, find support outside of home. However, in Japan, severe school regulations like these are being carried out among schools moreover, 
This can be defined as a result of students that Japanese society is seeking for. In addition, in view of such a society, Japan needs to undertake new attempts such as active learning. Finally, the community of high school has the power to form human identity among various elements. It is necessary to make the most useful measures for students' identity formation while paying attention to the social unit in which we are currently concerned.